Hi, my name is Manuel Likani. I am Dean and Professor at Citor Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Citor channel. Today, we are going to continue our discussion on friction. If you remember from the first part, we spent a significant amount of the time on describing the academic aspect of the friction. Today, I want to connect those concepts to clinical application. Friction has significant application in orthodontics and unfortunately has been recognized as a bad thing in orthodontics and craniofacial orthopedics, while in reality it has many application in, in our treatment. To better understand the friction, we need to look at different situations when the friction is applied. Any times that you're having a wire and bracket, regardless of type of wire, regardless of type of bracket, a friction appears because these two surfaces contacting each other. Two condition exist. One condition is when the bracket moves with the wire. In another word, there is no power chain or a spring or any other forces to move the bracket or slide the bracket on top of the wire. Just the wire and bracket move together. In the second condition is when the bracket is slide on top of the wire. For example, you are closing extraction space, you uh, retracting the anterior teeth. Both situations need to be studied in much more details. Let's start with the first situation when we are moving the bracket with the wire. To understand the role of friction in this situation, let's simplify these models to only two teeth in the system. And to even even make it more simple, Assume these two teeth are completely mirror image of each other. They have a little bit rotation and you are putting a flexible wire. And instead of putting bracket, you're using a tube in both sides. Now, if both tube producing a low friction, what do you expect to happen? Because both tooth have a rotation, the flexible wire gets the shape of the V-band. Therefore, it produces two couple in both sides, become a two couple system, produce two equal moment in both sides, and you're expecting the rotation of the teeth gradually corrected and the wire become a straight. In response to this straight movement of the wire, the wire gradually slides from both sides of the bracket and extends outside. However, because frictional forces appears between the wire and the tube in both sides, it produces horizontal forces that resist the movement. These horizontal forces will separate the tooth slightly. In another word, you not only correct the rotation, but slightly we separate the tooth from each other, which can be very useful during leveling and aligning when we have a space deficiency. Now let's look at the second scenario. Similar to the previous scenario, we have similar rotation of two teeth with mirror image. We put a flexible wire similar to the previous one. Instead, we are using the tubes that are producing higher friction. How we can produce higher friction? Assume we make the tube narrower and therefore the wire has difficulty in sliding through that conditions. Similar to the previous condition, a symmetrical V-band appears. However, the couples in both sides significantly increase. Because these couples increase, the magnitude of the moment in both sides increase. Rotation is getting corrected. The wire is starting to get straight it's more difficult for wire to slide through the tubes because it's higher friction. And this higher friction produces larger horizontal forces. Larger horizontal forces transfer to adjacent teeth and separate them even more, which can be very useful again when you have a space deficiency during the first phase of orthodontics treatment that is leveling and aligning. I'm going to walk you to the third model that is a little bit more complex but follows the same principles. Assume we have exactly the same situation but in one side we're using a larger tube where it produces lower friction. In another one we are using a much smaller tube that producing a higher friction. We are using exactly similar flexible wire under two teeth that similarly rotated. If you remember from two coupled discussion that we have Previously, the V-band does not become symmetrical anymore. It's become asymmetrical. Therefore, you're going to have two different size moments, two different amount of couples, 
and two different magnitude of friction. Even though each tube can produce different magnitude of the friction in each side, one is lower friction, one is higher, the magnitude of the friction that appears in the system is the same. This is based on the third law of the Newton that action and reaction are equal. In another word, before the wire gets the chance to resist the higher friction tube, he actually can slide through the lower friction tube and therefore the magnitude of the friction that appears in the system is closer to the lower friction tube and is equal in both sides. However, because the wire cannot slide from the side that has a higher friction, the amount of the wire that extends from that bracket at the end of the movement is smaller than the amount of the wire that extends from the lower friction tubes. The magnitude of horizontal forces still can separate the two teeth, but as I said, because the magnitude of the friction is smaller in comparison with the condition that both sides has a high friction, the separation would be smaller. I hope you enjoyed this session of Citor's channel and you find it useful for your clinical application. I am going to spend a few sessions describing different situations when the relationship between the wire and bracket and friction can affect your treatment. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.